And now to present our first keynote speaker, Andrea Passos. So, our first keynote speaker said that she would like the batteries she and her team have been working on to be used by, by many people and lead gasoline-powered cars to be replaced by electrical vehicles one day. She's an associate professor and the head of the engineering physics department of the University of Porto. She has a degree in solid state physics and material science and a PhD on materials and metallurgy engineering. From 2008 to 2011, she worked as a research scholar and long-term staff member at Los Alamos National Laboratory, US, where she started doing research into crystalline solid state electrolytes. In 2014, she discovered a kind of glass that replaces liquid electrolytes inside batteries and would lead her to focus on new energy storage devices. Her breakthrough research did not go unnoticed by John Goodenough, father of the rechargeable lithium-ion battery and Nobel laureate in chemistry in 2019, who invited her to join his team at UT Austin for three years. She has more than 55 peer-reviewed papers, most of which in high-impact journals, 13 families of patents, and she delivered more than 130 talks. I am very pleased to announce Professor Maria Elena Braga. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrea, for this very nice presentation I was not expecting. And thank you, the UT Austin Portugal program that give, gives us this opportunity to be here and show our research. It's very important to us. We are very honored in being here. Thank you for FCT, SEIA, and all the, the people here present. Um, so to start, Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think or what we think is the, the future of batteries as we know them today. So what are the possible entanglements leading to a transformation? What I mean about entanglements is the, the entanglements with other kinds of technologies like transistors, photovoltaic cells or uh, diodes. They all have very similar principles. Um, as we are going to discuss here. So uh, I, I am at the University of Porto, as Andrea said, uh, uh, but I'm also a, a researcher at INEGI. Uh, um, so yes, I worked for three years, uh, plus one year in 2015 where I went to Austin uh, nine times. <laughs> so, and I have to thank to Professor Goodina for that. And here he is. Uh, one year ago, more or less, it was under nine, I think, he received the Nobel. He, was, he knew he, he received the Nobel Prize. I was there. I, I told him that because the Nobel co Committee couldn't find him. So I, was, I had that privilege of uh, telling him that he was uh, a, a laureate. Um, it was very nice to work with him. We have uh, produced. Uh, a lot of different kind of um, re architectures, battery architectures, and well, more energy storage devices. But we have also worked with Professor Bard, so I, I don't want to forget all these people we were honored to work with at UT Austin. And Professor Bard is another important, he's not, he didn't win the Nobel Prize, but won a lot of other important prizes, as you can see here. And last but not least, uh, I've also uh, had the honor to work with Professor Deji Awende. And no, if you, you don't ask me, I didn't see the list of uh, awardees of Obama to work with. These were natural collaborations, and it's just, it was just a coincidence that all of them were uh, uh, pre President Obama's award, uh, awardees. Um, so what are the motivations for uh, the study of uh, lithium batteries? Um, is the lithium battery, lithium-ion battery, uh, stay here for a long time? 
Um, is the lithium going to stay? Is it important to, to work with lithium? What is the, the importance to work with lithium? And what can we learn from other type of devices um, that can eventually lead us ways to disrupt in the lithium batteries area? Um, well, we have seen an important um, uh, a company of uh, uh, electric vehicles uh, just mentioning the changes they have done, the breakthroughs they have done, but if we look at them, they are all engineering breakthroughs, which is not a bad thing, but it's, they, are, they are optimizations of existing uh, um, methods, like uh, not using uh, tabs that are not welded tabs and uh, make uh, bigger cells and improving in the, in, the, in the fabrication of the cells. But these are not exactly step increase, um, step increase uh, uh, changes in the technology. Uh, they are very important. They, they uh, um, allow to, to raise a lot of money. Uh, the investors are happy, but um, it's not a breakthrough in the, in the technology. So do we think, really think, that lithium is going to stay? What is the advantage of lithium? Lithium is a very light metal, the lightest metal, and um, it has a, a, a very high uh, energy density because of that. And so, and it allows uh, the highest uh, potential difference with, other, with cathodes, with, with uh, positive electrodes, because the lithium is used as negative electrode. So, it is very important to use the lithium if we want to have a high energy density and a high power. So, Yes, maybe the lithium is, is here to stay, uh, but we are going to talk about it. But in this presentation, I'm not going to really discuss devices made with lithium, because there are other possibilities. And maybe in the future, what we are going to use is adapted solutions for different uh, applications. But yes, if we want... Um, if we want to, to have high power, maybe we still have to, we will have to use lithium. So the batteries uh, are being used in many, uh, um, in, in, are starting to be used in, in many different devices from the electric vehicle to the grid. And a lot of uh, colleagues are working in this. And it was very interesting for us to see lately that um, actually in spite of all this work, the work that have been done in, uh, for developing other technologies, only five cathodes are being used in electric vehicles. And most of them is actually NMC, so nickel, manganese uh, and cobalt, with all the problems related with the cobalt because Cobalt is, is uh, uh, a mine, uh, the, mine, the mines are in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, so that raises a lot of human uh, problems. And um, so, but because the cobalt uh, uh, allows certain stability of the cathode and it allows a certain power, and because nickel allows high density and manganese reduces the cost, this uh, um, cathode is, is highly used. Uh, not used by, uh, by one of the big companies uh, that uses NCA actually, where A stands for aluminum. So as you see, in spite of all these uh, research and many breakthroughs in, in lithium ion batteries, the industry just chooses one type of cathode. So this tells us a lot of things uh, when we start to learn that uh, good technologies per se are not enough to be adopted by the industry. It has, to, the, the, something else has to, to, um, to happen. And actually, um, 
uh, in in one of the in one of the dinners of the of the, the Nobel Prize last year, the the president of the Royal uh, Academy told me that uh, luck is needed as well. So it's not only having a great technology. Um, so, sorry. So certain reflections uh, about all the technology, these reflections were initiated while I was actually at UT Austin and discussing all these important details with the colleagues and Professor Goodenough. The first uh, important thing is uh, what really drives the lithium ions to move from the anode to the cathode when we are discharging the cell? These are very simple questions that we needed to understand. What drives the cell where, where to, to, to have a spontaneous uh, uh, movement of the electrons through the external circuit? Where, where is the energy really stored? Is it really a chemical, uh, uh, chemical energy? Or is, is it something else? And we started discussing these, and uh, uh, there was a long reflection that I, I have initiated and also thought about it here during my stay in Portugal and with my colleagues in Portugal. And um, so this is brief. And so the most important thing that happens in the, in the cells, in the, in the batteries, is that, and now I'm going to show you a movie, is that the chemical potentials that you see here, the chemical potential of the, the anode and the chemical potential of the cathode, they change while the, the, the cathode during this charge is, being, uh, uh, is receiving electrons. And the anode is releasing electrons. You don't see here the, the, the anode changing uh, chemical potential because there are certain equilibriums that happen uh, and and uh, if the anode is, for example, um, a graphite anode, we have an equilibrium uh, for, with, uh, between C6 lithium and C12 lithium while the cathode is discharging. So this is not symmetric. What the, the change in, in, in chemical potentials is not symmetric in both anode and cathode. And there, are, there, are, there is a certain equilibrium while we have the plateau, the famous plateau, uh, while the, 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 the cell discharges, there is a famous, uh, there is a plateau uh, and where the, the, the difference in, in, in voltage is kept. And this is what we want to use. We want the cell to keep in this plateau for a long time while discharging. Uh, so, we, we, uh, we discuss and we realize that it's very important to have, to have these, these, uh, these interplay with the chemical potentials. And it's also very important to have these EDLCs, these double layer capacitors, that form for storing the energy and compensate the difference in chemical potentials. So this is where the energy is stored. The same thing happens if we, instead of a battery, you have a, 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 fa a field effect transistor, a FET transistor, a, a FET. It's the same thing when we, 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 we switch the off to on, for example, in a memory, what happens is that the channel forms because there is an interplay of uh, uh, the, the chemical potentials move, due to a bias voltage that is applied. So again, there is some energy stored in the EDLCs that form. This is represented with lithium glass, but this lithium glass could be actually any dielectric. This is the same. The same happens every time we have three uh, materials, two of them, this is a semiconductor, the NOS2 is a semiconductor, and we have a dielectric and, uh, and a metal. In, in, any t in any case, we have this kind of interplay. So this is important. So 
really where the energy is stored is in the EDLCs. This is really important to, to, to have that conscious. And also, to have the conscious that we can change the, the chemical potentials and actually make an architecture, a new architecture with different materials, this is also very important because we can be tailors. We can change the materials that we have connect, contacting the, the glass and make a new possibility, a new device. So this is really important. So then, uh, uh, in 2019, we came to Portugal, and thanks to FCT and to Professor Godinov's endowment, and to Inegi and to Phil, uh, we, we, we have finally um, a lab with a nice glove box <laughs> uh, where we can study cells with lithium. But I'm, as I told you, I'm not going to bring you lithium, although we can do exactly the same things and show you exactly the same things with lithium. So, um, Andrea talked and said that we discover a, um, a glass. And this glass is very important because this glass is a ferroelectric material. So, a ferroelectric is a material that polarizes spontaneously. Uh, it doesn't need to, uh, to have an applied electric field. It just needs to be at a certain temperature so that the dipoles that forms or ions can move and polarize. So align the dipoles or, or align the, the ions in a certain way that it creates an electric field inside. It, this is very important because it's spontaneous and it can be changed with an applied electric field. So we can use this inside a battery and actually have an extra, an extra potential difference. And also we can have all the charge transfer through electrostatics, using electrostatics and not really moving ions inside the cell. And this allow us to, to to, um, to be able to uh, not use so much energy in the Joule effect, so not to waste energy while the ions move inside the, the, the electrolyte. And so I saw this when I went to Chile, and I thought it was really interesting because uh, this, this is a, a, a race for all the family. So when one can ask, how can the grandpa and the teenager race in the same, uh, uh, in the, run in the same race uh, with so different, uh, 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 so different possibilities in sports? Uh, sometimes the grandpa is better than the teenager, but uh, that's another thing. Um, they can run together in the same race because they only have to run part of the race, and then they bring, they, they give the relay to each other. So, uh, the same happens with the dipoles and with the ions in the electrolyte. If we have an electrolyte, uh, or, which is a ferroelectric, it forms dipoles, the ions don't, don't have to run big uh, distances in the electrolyte if they are uh, aligned, they, they have this, if they are uh, polarized, like forming dipoles. As you see here uh, on, the, on the bottom, we can form different dipoles by moving this positive charge to the negative charge. So like this, the ions can move just small displacements as, as uh, part of the family here. The grandpa only moves, only runs uh, uh, several small amount of kilometers and also the teenager. So this is all the family can run this race. It's the same with the dipoles and ions in the electrolyte. So what is the formula of our electrolyte? It's there. We, there are some certain variations, of course, and we can make composites of this, of this. meaning that if we uh, add a, a polymer, we can actually uh, decrease the hygroscopicity uh, of, the, of the, the electrolyte 
and improve much more the, the mechanical properties of it. Uh, the electrolyte is also very rich in lithium if it's the lithium version or in sodium if it's the sodium version. And this means that we don't actually have to have a lithiated cathode if we are talking about uh, a battery. We don't have to have lithium in any of the electrodes as I'm going to show you to have uh, uh, a device that stores a lot of energy. And of course, the di dielectric constant is very high and the ionic conductivity is very high at room temperature. So why using a ferroelectric glass? Because it can, it's, it's safe, obviously this is the first thing. Uh, the liquid electrolyte is flammable, the electrolyte is, is safe, this ferroelectric glass electrolyte, and um, it can be folded, uh, uh, it, it can plate in both electrodes as you are going to see. And the drawback is because it's a ferroelectric, nothing is linear with these materials. So uh, it takes a long time to understand how it works, actually. And, and, and uh, uh, to control uh, the way it, it works in the cell. But as you see here, we can actually see how the, the electrolyte plated, how lithium was plated from the electrolyte. And here is the membrane used on the, even on the steel, on the steel uh, uh, current collector. And here the same thing, we can see from the electrolyte that is plating on the uh, one electrode and on the other. So, I brought these from uh, uh, Alkalil, from Jim Alkalil, because sometimes we need to go back in time and remember the basics. We are doing this at classes every day, with classes, and I think this is important. Go back in time and remember the basics. And electrostatics is one of the basic things that we learn in physics when we start, at least at the university, is one of the first subjects that we learn. And we can use it inside of a cell. Why aren't we using it inside of the cell? We don't need to have energy loss where the ion is over, overcoming the, the, the cathode or the anode. We can actually have them just, just moving inside the electrodes, on the electrodes, and not, in, uh, and not being conducted through the electrolyte where they lose energy. And as you see here, um, this was uh, some, uh, in, the, in the 18th century, and where, when science was actually uh, uh, played in theaters, and people didn't know what happened when the, the boy had his hand uh, elect, uh, uh, polarized, and he actually attracted flakes of gold from a, dis a big distance when the, the body was uh, um, insulated from, from the earth or from any other uh, materials by the, the silk ropes. So alkali show, show us very important things and this can happen actually inside of a cell. As we remember in the, in the, in the classes from, from uh, our physics. So let's go to the science of, of, that we are developing. Uh, so by keeping all the, the electrochemical uh, reactions to the cathode, we can actually increase a lot the capacity instead of decreasing it. So there are two, um, two uh, uh, processes going on and competing in the cell, and this makes that the electrolyte is optimizing. The, there is a plasticizer that, that is the switch inside the cell, and in the ferroelectric, the dipoles align, so the dipoles optimize. So we have uh, an increase in capacity instead of having a decrease in capacity as in a normal cell. So as you see here, this is the first cycle, and in the 466, if I see well, we have 
uh, in the first one we had around uh, uh, 100 uh, million powers per gram. In the 466 we had 800, 800 million powers per, per gram. And this is a lithium cell. But now I'm, I'm going to show you other cells that are not lithium, that we are, in which we are using zinc and copper. Why are we using zinc and copper? We can, the maximum voltage, the theoretical voltage is actually 1.06 volts, but because we have a ferroelectric electrolyte, we can do better than that because we have an extra delta V, so we can go to 1.3 cells. These are very inexpensive cells, and we can use them, for example, in the grid or in large extensions. And we can do, uh, uh, we can actually have a lot of um, uh, profit uh, uh, applications using these, these materials because the resistance drops a lot with temperature, as you can see here. From uh, minus 30 to, uh, to zero, we have a, a big drop in resi internal resistance and we have a big increase in dielectric constants. constant. This means that we have the electrolyte, the ferroelectric, improving uh, several orders of magnitude, five or more, with, with a small variation in temperature. And we can use that. So besides using the, the, ferroelectric, the ferroelectric to have uh, uh, the, the charge being conducted inside the cell through electrostatics, uh, we can also use the properties of, of a ferroelectric. And a ferroelectric must be a dielectric first, then it must be a piezoelectric, so changing, uh, uh, we, with changing in stress, we can actually produce a delta V uh, a voltage, and it can be a pyroelectric, so have a reaction to temperature increase, to, to a, to a to a, a rate in temperature. And this is what we see here. We can actually have powers of 0.6 milliwatts at 70 degrees C. To compare with, uh, with ants, this is when we, we use our cell with a resistor. So it's under a load and still the, the voltage increases a lot from two, 20 degrees to to 70 degrees C. And even if it is with a load, and here we have the comparison, this is, uh, here there is no load, and the powers are nanowatts, and here we have powers at the, the milliwatts, so a difference of at least 100 times with a thermoelectric, and this is one of the best thermoelectrics. And here again, we can see very high currents at 184 degrees C and higher voltage than the theoretical because we have the extra contribution of a ferroelectric glass. And to compare with uh, other thermoelectrics, we see in the internet this example. There is one model of the uh, bismuth telluride, which is the best thermoelectrics. And, um, if we actually uh, uh, put it around, so they, they need five modules to put around the, 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 the arm and get the, 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 the heat, the heat from the arm, so uh, it needs to have a gradient, so uh, it needs to have a difference in temperature from the outside to the inside in this case, and they, only can, they can only make, uh, produce around uh, uh, the millivolt, 20 or 50 millivolts, that have to be transformed by that circuit into two volts to light the, the green LED. These are our cells. This is room temperature cells. These cells have a much smaller uh, surface area than they, what they show. And we can actually make 2.3 volts and 1.1 milliamps and we can just light the LED like this at room temperature and at steady temperature. So here is one of the movies that we, we made, and uh, this is the collaboration of, uh, of Joanna, which is my colleague and researches with me. 
And here you can see how we have cells with 1.37 volts, and actually how can we uh, bend the cells and still have 1.36. Remember that the theoretical voltage uh, given from the electrodes is 1.06 and we have 1.36. So we can actually use these cells in the outer uh, part, for example, of a car or uh, in the grid or in a building. And we do, we do not lose um, voltage. And here is, we, we, we light, light the four LEDs in, in parallel. And we started, uh, when, when we lit, lit the, the LEDs, the, the, the current, this is current, went uh, down. And then we, we, we start, started the, the heating blower. And as you see, the, the current started to increase. So what you have seen in graphs, uh, that the, the capacity increased with time. Here you can see life. The capacity is increasing in time. This is three times the, the, the video, the, the, the real time is three times slower. Uh, this was not to, to, to be too boring, but you can see how the current increases. Here you can see the current increasing three times, but we can increase the current 30, time, 30 times. Uh, this it depends on how discharged the, the cells are in the beginning when you, when you, when you uh, add them together. And, and, re, and see that I am lighting, we are lighting LEDs. So this is under a load and still the current goes up. So still the, the capacity goes up. Just by changing a small, uh, 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 the temperature uh, uh, in a small, a small variation because that uh, air, air blower cannot go um, to more than 90 degrees C when it's applied to the cell. And remember again that the, the, the surface area is much smaller than it is shown here. And to, if, you, if you ask me, oh, this is a reaction that is happening with, with oxygen? No, it's not, because we have exactly the same results when we make under an argon atmosphere. So this is just due to the ferroelectric material we have inside. And here you see, how we can just by uh, when we uh, the, the 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 current doubles, we have a decrease in electric in internal resistance that is really very clear, and we have um, uh, an efficiency of 86 percent when we are uh, as, um, lighting these LEDs in the cells with the cells. So. The advantages of using a ferroelectric electrolyte are, are really important. It can be any ferroelectric electrolyte. I'm just not here just selling ours. Um, but using a ferroelectric electrolyte in an in a energy storage device allows you not only to keep the chemical part, the electrochemical part, so you can still have the capacity due to the chemical reaction, but you can also have other properties happening. You don't waste so much energy because the ions don't have to move inside the cell. You can actually have the cell working with just electrostatics. And you can benefit from the, the huge increase in, in energy that you have when the temperature changes a little bit. So, uh, this can be uh, a way to use, uh, uh, to use uh, cells, energy storage cells in the future. And we, another advantage is that you act in, on the contrary of what happens with a thermoelectric material, you don't actually have to have a gradient or even a temperature rate like in a pyroelectric, you can have a huge increase in power and a huge increase in, in, dielectric, in, in energy storage, energy stored at 
if you just increase the temperature and you, re you keep the temperature constant, which, and this is something new and only happens in a ferroelectric material. So I want to thank Joanna, which is my colleague, and we work, this is a work of a group, and Professor Goodenough and Andy, we work together for these three years. So I want to thank them too. And this was Austin and the tower. The tower when the, uh, Professor Goodenough won the Nobel Prize, you can see lithium plus. <laughs> so thank you very much.